you're just about to release a film documentary you made, Metal Down Under, about the Australian metal scene. So can I ask, were you actually a filmmaker before this or were you involved in the heavy metal scene or both? Uh, both. I've been a filmmaker since uh, 2001 or 2002, working as, a, as an editor mostly on, on documentary and, and now feature film as well. And um, I grew up in Perth and sort of was involved in the punk and hardcore and metal scene over there in the late 90s, playing in a band and starting to make music videos. And then moved to Melbourne in 2002 and sort of continued making music videos and attending shows over there and always sort of more in the, I guess, the grungier side of, of heavy music and heavy alternative and a bit of thrash and stuff like that. And, but yeah, it's always, always a mix of film and, and music at the same time. So when did you come up with the idea for this documentary? How long has it taken to come from the initial idea into the finished project? Well, I, the idea came, yeah, it would have been two years ago that I came up with the idea for it, and I spent about six months sort of researching the the idea and, and thinking about how I could raise the money and making contact with a range of people and bands to get the project underway. And then I started the filming process in January 2013. So... Basically, the, the filming and the editing side took, you know, I spread it out over 18 months and there was that initial six months of planning. And I sort of did the shoot as I could afford to and as I could put a schedule together so that getting around Australia wasn't going to cost me, you know, a fortune and have to do it many times. I tried to block it out. So I threw seven interviews in Melbourne in, in four days and then I did go to Sydney for two days and Brisbane for one day. And I ended up sort of doing, I guess, two, what I'd say is more Australian tours where I you know, would hit up five or six cities. And then I did a, a couple more shoots where I was going to be in Perth for another job. So I also tacked on two days of filming for this. And then I was going to be in Melbourne for something else. So I did two days of filming when I was there. And being based in Indonesia, we had the Hammersonic Festival and the Soundwork Glass from Perth of the international bookers for that. So I coordinated with them to be able to interview guys like Dave Haley from Cyclopsic and the guys from Voyager and the Inventor and the, sort of the, the people that were on tour from Australia. I could do interviews with them while they were up in Indonesia and also had a friend that was living in London. So he coordinated and did the interviews with Eve Hughes and Tony Campos over at the Crowbar in Soho. So yeah, 18 months, probably six or seven weeks of filming in, within that time. You did mention that you have been working as the filmmaker on documentaries and feature films and that, but Metal Down Under is an independent project, isn't it? That's right. Usually what happens is there is an extended process of pitching a film to a network and to the funding bodies, and unless you're making a film which has a certain audience appeal and heavy metal, although we... It is a big scene, and it is a bigger scene than, than a lot of people actually realise. It still doesn't have the perceived importance or cultural relevance to Australian funding bodies and Australian networks. And so I decided that I had been down that path before with other films where we had got development funding and taken it to a certain level, and then projects fall over because you can't get that next stage of funding and then you can't afford to make the film. And I had been quite busy working on a lot of other people's films that were properly funded, and that was great. I was getting paid as I should and working hard, and then I thought, well, I can take some time out now and spend some of my money actually making a film that I would like to make that I don't necessarily think someone else would would pay for, or, you know, that being the Australian government. Yeah. Well, from doing the interviews and then sitting through and editing them, is there anything that, like, someone said that really sticks out in your mind? I think a, I think a lot of it sticks in my mind. I think the, the main things that I got out of the film was there's a common passion amongst you know, all of the musicians that I spoke to to actually produce music that they feel is personal to them and is true to themselves and they don't necessarily care whether 
you know, the commercial radio stations or a record label are going to pick them up and they're not in it for that you know, quest for the, for the money. But they all would like to be paid well if they could, but it seems to me that people make this music because they have no other choice. This is the music that, that they were born to make. And I think Adam Ajit from, from Alchemist summed it up when he was saying that, uh, I forget how old he is now, I think he said he was 42 and he still had bangs and that's what he was born to do. So he's just going to continue doing it. There's, there doesn't seem to be another choice for a lot of these guys. They just want to make heavy music. So I think that was one of the, the main things that I got out of uh, talking to these people is that they are super passionate about the music they make and really driven to be the best that they possibly can be. And when it is released, it will be available to buy on DVD? That's right. On the 22nd of August, it will be officially released in stores and online. So you can order the DVD online as well as in stores like JB Hi-Fi and Music Records and Metal Merchant uh, right across Australia. Also, I have started the process of making it available on iTunes, but then it's a little bit slower than I had imagined, so I think that'll be about a month after the DVD release it'll become available for download by iTunes. And so metaldownunder.com would be the best place for people to go and find out where they can get hold of it or pre-order their copy? Yep, metaldownunder.com, and we have an online shop. You can purchase you know, the pre-order of the DVD, and we've also got a bundle pack of the DVD with a T-shirt for 50 bucks. And they're actually posting worldwide, although it is you know, an Australian-New Zealand uh, distribution deal with MGM. But, yeah, so metaldownunder.com is the place to do that. And it is actually a three-part documentary, like there's three DVDs, 55 minutes each, and I've watched the first two, and from what I've seen, like even if you're in the metal scene or you're not, you're going to learn something that there's a lot of wisdom and insight. That's right. And I mean, I, I was born in 1980, and I think that's kind of where the film starts. Maybe we start in 1979, but I didn't you know, start listening to Australian heavy metal till 91 or 92. And so for me, it was a, you know, a huge learning experience, actually catching up and meeting these bands and people that were doing it when I was a baby. So I think the feedback I've had from a few of the people that have seen the film is that, you know, they're learning things that they didn't know, they're remembering um, events that they attended and bands that they used to listen to, and they're working out the connections between the different bands that they didn't necessarily know existed, you know, band members having played in a range of bands and, and whatnot. And I think it's a good mix for... For the older people to reminisce about what it was like in the early days and for the young people to say, oh, how good is the scene now? And look where it came from. I never knew that these bands had used it and the band really paved the way for the bands that I'm listening to today. That's awesome because, like, watching the film, it's like, I would never have known that you weren't there from the start. It seems like it's been made by someone who was, was there the whole time. Oh, yeah, well, I guess, what I wanted to do was I wanted to let the people in the film tell the story. They were the ones that were there. They're the ones that experienced it. They're the ones that remember the story. And I wanted my job to be just to be able to help facilitate these guys tell their stories and put it together in a way that if I'm sitting on the couch at home watching this and I can get a feeling of what it would have been like to be at a metal show in 1985 or 95 or 2005 and know what these bands were trying to do and what they did achieve. So, you know, I, I was I was really hoping that that sentiment would come through the film that, you know, no matter what part I've played in the metal scene or an audience member has played, they can still feel like, you know, they were there, they're, they're watching the film now, but it feels like that they were taking part in whichever time period they're watching. So are you already thinking about another documentary? Because I think you have done a brilliant job with this and once once it gets out there and everyone starts seeing it and telling their friends they've got to see it and that, I think it's going to be really successful. Yeah, I, I hope so. And I, I appreciate you, know, you saying that. I've, I've had some good feedback from from people in the media and, and bands and people that, that I interviewed. So I'm hoping enough people enjoy the film and, and see the value in making such a film, I'm, I'm more than sure there's going to be critics in terms of 
who's left out of the film or what moment in time or band or why did I include this person and not that person. And that's great. You know, I'm, I'm more than more than happy to have those debates with people about who made the cut and who didn't. And it, if we're all very well, we can put on another film, we can, we can take it off in a different direction and look at an underground scene that perhaps didn't get... Um, you know, shown in, in this film or a different moment in time or a different subgenre that has had an effect on a lot of people in Australia and maybe deserves a bit of time in the spotlight. So, you know, I'll, I'll be welcoming that kind of debate as well. Yeah, I really do wish you all the best with the release and the success, of course, of Metal Down Under. And that is being released on the 22nd of August and people should go to metaldownunder.com to find out all about it. And I want to thank you very much for your time, Nick. No worries. Thanks for the call. Metaldownunder.com. Thank you. Have a good day, Nick. Thank you. See ya. Bye.